Welcome to today's Barnes Takeout. My name is Amy Gillette. I'm a collections researcher at the Barnes. And today we're going to look at this sculpture, a large wooden sculpture of a seated female figure made by the Sinufo people of West Africa around the late 19th to early 20th century. And so looking at the sculpture, what we see, let's zoom in a bit, we see a bowl. Um, we can see the smooth wood of the exterior. It's a bit more roughly hewn on the interior, resting on the head of, um, of a female figure, a woman that's um, very elegantly abstracted into this kind of heart shape. We can see she's got closed eyes, some scarification on the sides of her face that carries over into her arms, onto her um, breasts, a bit on her belly as well. And we can see that she's kind of grasping her belly with, um, with her hands here. And we can see as well that she's seated on a stool and here's a back leg, but actually her own legs are, um, are serving as, as the front legs. Now let's um, take a look from the side. And so from here, we can see that her belly does protrude a bit. And again, we can um, see a little bit better the way in which her legs are operating as those of the stool. And again, we can see her um, from the other side to get a sense of the almost architect architectonic sculptural dimensions of this work of art. And again, see just how, I guess, um, erect her breasts are and how swollen her belly is, suggesting that um, this is an object that is maybe making her look like she's pregnant, may have to do with, um, with fertility. And so what we know about this particular object is that it was something associated with the Sandogo society within the Sinufo people to which most women and a very few select men would belong. And the Sandogo society were involved with um, divination. They practiced an animistic religion and divination would be a kind of mediation between this world and the spiritual one in order to help people give advice to solve problems. And they were also involved with ensuring the, the matrilineal purity of their society. And sculptures like this, with um, the bulls on top of their head and their monumental size, seem to have been involved in a ceremony that would take place in November or December at the end of the harvest season where um, the, the women belonging to the, the society would bring their sculptures into the courtyard of the most important elder women within the society and they would use the bowls um, for mixing the harvested shea butter, which is something else that the women were responsible for. And it was associated with making good nutritious meals with smoothing their own skin as well as the skin of their infants. And they could use these sculptures as a way of calling down, um, calling down the spirit world and for, um, for singing the most important songs of the society. And men in general were not supposed to see these sculptures. And when this ceremony took place at the end of the harvest season, in fact, men were not even allowed to go anywhere near, um, near the courtyard of the house of the, um, the place where it was held. And so when I first learned this, it actually made me wonder if the women themselves did carve these statues, but it seems um, that what they would do would be to commission them from um, from other other tribes of the Sinufo people, and so it would really be only the men in their own um, particular group that wouldn't be seeing these statues. And so, having gotten some of the historical context for this object, let's go ahead and look at where it is at the barns. So, here it is in the central vitrine. Of, um, of room 21 at the Barnes Foundation, which gives you a sense of, um, of its pretty monumental size. This is a gallery that has further um, masks, sculpture in the round from different peoples in West Africa. There are modern paintings by figures like Edward Manet, Maurice Trio, 
uh, Amadeo Modigliani. There are decorative objects like uh, hinges, andirons, chairs, the spit that's on top of the vitrine. And as you may know, Albert Barnes would create displays like this as a way of asking people to find um, to find formal continuities between different types of art made at different periods and places all around the world. And so with that, I see maybe, for example, if we look at the arch of the woman's arm here, of the female figure's arm, we might we might see a kind of resonance in the arch of the flying buttress in um, in this image of the cathedral or in this iron spit up here. And then if we look over to this portrait by Modigliani, you might notice the um, pretty abstracted heart-shaped face and he and many other artists in Paris when a lot of sculpture from West Africa had been brought there really as a result of the French colonial rubber trade. They, um, modern French artists, emulated the shapes of the sculpture um, to tap into what they understood as its um, expressive power. Another, another connection that I see is in some of the medieval objects like this one over here. And let's go ahead and pivot to our right. This is a, an image of, um, of Christ carrying the cross. This is something else that in the Middle Ages would also have helped people to kind of mediate between this world and, and the spiritual one to stir up um, emotions at the suffering of Christ in order to achieve a kind of mystical union. And it apparently worked to the extent that on some of the antagonists of Christ, um, people gouged out some of their faces. So like the um, Sunufa woman and other objects, it was um, functional, a kind of power object that mediated between the celestial and sublunary. And I think it's important to remember that Dr. Barnes set up these formal um, as well as conceptual connections in these galleries nearly a hundred years ago with what was then a really progressive idea that great art is great art, no matter what kind of object it was, when it was made, where it was made, hoping that people would see the greatness of human achievement and power of aesthetic engagement throughout. And it's a legacy that I hope very much we make good on today. Thank you so much for joining. That's it for today's Takeout. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.